Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. At the top of the Washington Post, it reads, Democracy Dies in Darkness. It was never clear to me whether this is a warning or if it's their mission statement. A couple of days ago, they ran this article. U.S. has seen a record number of weather disasters this year. It's only September. It takes a lot to surprise me, said a government scientist who tracks billion-dollar disasters, but this year has been a surprise. Then they went on to say that Hurricane Idalia became the 23rd billion-dollar weather disaster to strike the United States this year. The headline reads, U.S. has seen a record number of weather disasters this year, but what they're actually talking about is billion-dollar disasters. To put this in perspective, it doesn't take a lot to produce a billion dollars in damage. A one-hour hailstorm in Sydney in 1999 produced more than $4 billion worth of damage. In 2001, a hailstorm along the I-70 corridor produced $2 billion worth of damage. And in 2017, a hailstorm in Denver cost more than $1 billion. The 10 highest paid National Football League quarterbacks have a combined contract value of more than $2 billion. Every single day, the U.S. government spends nearly $1.5 billion on just interest payments on the debt. That's a real disaster. But getting back to weather, this week in 1926, Miami was destroyed by a hurricane. This is what Miami Beach looked like after the Category 4 hurricane came through. According to Google AI, if the 1926 Great Miami Hurricane happened today, it would cause an estimated $122 billion in insured losses and $200 billion in economic losses. The total value of taxable property in Miami-Dade County was $425.8 billion in 2023. During the 1920s, very few people lived in the southeastern United States. It was too hot and humid for most people to tolerate. But the advent of air conditioning beginning in the 1950s has caused the population of the southeastern United States to grow very rapidly, with Miami being one of the largest population centers. There's been a huge increase in population over the last century. People own a lot more stuff now than they used to, and inflation has driven the prices through the roof. There's a lot more property at risk now, so even a minor hailstorm can produce a very large amount of damage. The Washington Post headline is completely fake and it's designed to mislead their readers. And they want the readers to pay them $120 a year to feed them this sort of ridiculous propaganda. But let's go back to this week in 1926 when Miami was destroyed by a hurricane. The Red Cross described the following 12 months as the worst disaster year in their history. They reported 111 disasters, including 29 tornadoes, 24 floods, and 9 hurricanes. The flood of 1927 along the Mississippi River was the worst flood in U.S. history and caused millions of people to flee their homes permanently. During November 1927, Vermont had their worst flood. It destroyed more than 1,000 bridges and drowned the lieutenant governor. I lived in Winooski, Vermont for a little while and rode my bicycle past this building every day on the way to work. On September 20th, 1927, St. Louis was largely destroyed by a tornado. The damage was estimated at $100 million in 1927, which adjusted for inflation would be an extremely high number now. Prior to 1960, September and October were much hotter in the United States, with 90-degree days quite common. On September 14, 1927, 30 states were over 90 degrees Fahrenheit, and 11 states were over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. On September 17, 1927, it was 101 degrees at Columbus, Indiana. Georgia set the record of most days above 90 degrees Fahrenheit in 1927, Quitman had 155 days over 90 degrees, beginning at the end of March and extending into November. It was also very hot in the Arctic during 1927. A group of motorists tried to drive to the Arctic Circle through Denmark, Lapland, and Finland. To their continued astonishment, the temperature was never less than 90 degrees in the shade. 
The intention was to reach the Arctic Ocean, but 40 miles of melted permafrost on the coast prevented this. An average of 210 miles a day was made on the journey, which was arduous in the extreme, and at one time the car had an actual race with death among the forest fires in Sweden over terrible roads. Here's an article from 1927 showing a child sunbathing near the North Pole. Here's a list of some of the weather disasters from 1927. February 17, 36 killed by tornado in Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. March 18, tornado took 33 lives in Green Forest and Denver, Arkansas. April 12, tornado destroyed Rock Springs, Texas, killing 59. May 9, tornadoes in Middle Western states killed about 200. May 10, 100 killed by tornadoes in Virginia, Tennessee, and Kentucky. September 29, 89 killed, 1,200 injured, and $75 million damage done by tornado in St. Louis, Missouri. The Red Cross reported 111 disasters they assisted with that year compared to the $23 billion disasters the Washington Post is talking about now. On September 7, 1927, a tidal wave killed hundreds of people on the west coast of Mexico. On September 10, 5,000 people died in a typhoon in China. On September 13th, a typhoon and tidal wave wrecked many towns in Japan. On April 15, 1927, New Orleans received 15 inches of rain in 18 hours, causing water to rise 4 feet in parts of the city. The worst school massacre in U.S. history occurred on May 18, 1927, when Andrew Kehoe blew up a school in Michigan. Also in 1927, the consensus of scientists came up with a very elaborate theory about how Martians had built a very sophisticated network of canals on their planet. In 1927, it was believed that climate change was destroying the climate of Mars and that the Martians had built canals to provide water for themselves in the changing climate. Not much has changed since 1927, other than the press becoming so sloppy and lazy that it's not even fun reading their articles anymore. I have to wonder what sort of intellectually lazy person would find themselves entertained by this sort of propaganda from the Washington Post. Toto has been playing back the curtain on the climate scam for more than 15 years. You can visit him, Kyrie Caesar, Toki Upla, and the four new puppies on the web at realclimatescience.com.